JFT just fair and direct. Good morning everyone and welcome to JFD's daily market review for December the 16th. I am Harald Lambos Pissuros, Senior Market Analyst here at JFD and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events and how they could affect the markets. But uh, before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar traded uh, lower against all the other G10 currencies on Tuesday during the Asian session Wednesday. It underperformed the most versus GBP, JPY and AUD in that order while it lost the least ground versus the Euro, the Swiss franc and the Canadian dollar. The weakening of the US dollar and the Swiss franc combined with the strengthening of the Aussie suggests that markets turned uh, risk on yesterday. However, the strengthening of the Japanese yen points otherwise, thus in order to get a clearer picture with regards to the broader market sentiment, we prefer to turn our gaze to the equity world. Here major EU and uh, US indices were a sea of green, with the only exception being UK FTSE 100 which slid 0.28%. This may have been due to the strengthening of the pound following a report that the trade deal between the EU and the UK may now be close even as UK Prime Minister uh, Boris Johnson repeated that the most likely outcome is still uh, no deal. The upbeat investor morale rolled over into the Asian session today as well. Apart from the optimism surrounding Brexit, what may have also boosted risk appetite may, um, may be more upbeat uh, news with regards to, uh, to coronavirus vaccinations. The US expanded its rollout of uh, the vaccine developed, developed by Pfizer and BioNTech, while Moderna seems ready to get approval for its own drug this week. What's more, investors may have cheered the decision by US congressional leaders to begin a second meeting in order to finalize a spending bill, which could include a coronavirus aid package. All this comes in, all this comes in line with our view for higher equities in the foreseeable future. Remember, we've been highlighting that barring any side effects, the prospect of vaccinations around the globe, combined with a Biden presidency in the US, could uh, keep the broader sentiment, uh, the broader market sentiment supported. As for today, the main event on the agenda is, uh, is the FOMC uh, last monetary policy decision for uh, this year. The committee's uh, latest meeting proved to be a non-event as it took place in the midst of the US elections. Officials just decided to keep their monetary policy settings unchanged and maintain their pledge to do whatever they can to support their coronavirus hit economy. With the virus still spreading fast, inflation running well below the 2% objective and the Congress yet to agree on a new coronavirus aid bill, officials are more likely than not to expand their stimulative efforts at this gathering. Market chatter suggests that policymakers may increase purchases of longer dated treasuries in order to contain a rise in yields. Thus, if they just do that, the market is unlikely to move much. For equities and other risk-linked assets to gain more, officials have to expand their easing efforts and signal that more may be in the works. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, during the early EU session, we already got the UK CPIs for November. Both the headline and core rates slid by more than anticipated, but the pound did not react, confirming that GBP traders have their gaze locked on the political landscape. Then we get uh, the preliminary market manufacturing and services PMIs for December from the Euro area, the UK and the US. Both Eurozone's manufacturing and services indices are expected to have declined to 53 and uh, 41 from 53.8 and 41.7 respectively, but strangely the composite index is forecast to have risen to 45.6 from 45.3. No forecasts are available for the UK data, while the US expectations are for declines as well. 
From the US, we also get retail sales for November with expectations pointing to a 0.3% month-over-month slide after a 0.3% increase in October. Canada CPIs for the same month are also due to be released. The headline rate is forecast to have ticked up to 0.8% year-over-year from 0.7%, while no forecast is available for the core rate. Now, tonight, during the Asian during the Asian Trading Thursday, we get New Zealand's GDP for the third quarter and Australia's employment report for November. New Zealand's GDP is expected to have rebounded 13.5% quarter over quarter after sliding 12.2% in the second quarter, something that will drive the year over year rate up to minus 1.3% from minus 12.4%. Uh, at its uh, latest uh, monetary policy meeting, the RBNZ kept its official cash rate and large-scale asset purchase program unchanged, and although it noted that it will launch a funding for lending program in December, Governor Andrian Orr said that uh, domestic activity since August has been more resilient than, than, previously uh, than previously assumed, which means that the chance for adopting negative interest rates may have eased. In our view, a decent rebound in economic activity may diminish the likelihood for uh, negative rates even even further. And now in Australia, the unemployment rate is forecast to have held steady at 7%, while the net change in employment is expected to reveal that the economy has gained 50,000 jobs after gaining 178.8 thousands in October. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm hosting every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So goodbye, have a great day, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again tomorrow. JFT, just fair and direct.